The fear of public speaking rates close to death for some people. So imagine the challenge of not only appearing in public, but reading your own work. But creative writing students from Flinders University more than met that test at their latest speakeasy event, originally from a term to describe illegal bars during the Prohibition era in the United States. Flinders Speakeasy is a forum in which students read their own fiction and poetry to an audience of their peers and the public. At last week's event, nine undergraduate students joined Flinders creative writing lecturer and novelist Kalinda Ashton to reflect on issues ranging from families and relationships to grief and loss, and how we make sense of the world. Samuel Williams was among the speakers, reciting a story of a mother's hope and ambition for her child. When I was born, my mother sang me lullabies and hung her shining hopes above my bed. A thousand dreams would dance for me like fireflies whenever I laid down my sleepy head. A falana, a falane, a falanai, a little boat to drift upon the bay. A lulilay, a lulilai, a lullaby to carry you, my child, to far away. And when I dreamed, I dreamed of all she promised me and touched the glowing stars from where I lay. I sailed away each night on winds of melody, on waves of lulilai and lulilay. When I was young, I knew I could do anything. I knew the world belonged to me, pardon. My family who loved me told me so. I dreamed of all the heroes I grew up to be and all the far off places I would go. And though I learned success would not come easily, whenever things were difficult, I'd say, I know that there is someone who believes in me. I keep within myself a lulilay. For even when the stars were unattainable, a fearless few had shown it could be done. I knew with a conviction unexplainable that of the millions, I could be the one. But sometimes gentle waves beneath the sailboat can darken and the tranquil seas turn rough until it is impossible to stay afloat and dreamers find their best is not enough. We lay our longings bare for all the world to see, but sometimes there are dreams we cannot keep, and all that's left of so much glistening fantasy are streaks of soul on moonlit waters deep. And though I'd never tell you this, my little one, adrift on gentle waves of luli lay, there comes a time when all our dreaming days are done and all our lullabies are put away. And still I sing you falane and falanai, a little boat adrift upon the bay, a lulilay, a lulilai, a lullaby, to carry you, my child, to far away. For every now and then I wonder secretly if all my promises might still come true, if you might be the hero I could never be and reach the stars as I could never do. Melanie Pryor invoked the Australian landscape to draw the audience into a story about her character's family. The shadows are longer and the air smells different here. I've come back from far away, from a long time ago. There are slight hints of half-forgotten dewy mornings hanging behind the gum leaves and the smell of a rusty swing set in the flash of a magpie's shadow. Dry heads of grass nod languidly to the four o'clock bellow of a distant cow. Wood ducks hoot their young home, and geranium faces nod sagely as the dinner bell chimes across hills strewn with wire fences. A border collie cross slumps at my feet, drooling over the ham rinds from lunch. I had forgotten how jarring the screech of the white cockatoos is, and how vivid their plumage against the arching, depthless sky. Something nudges my bare foot a half-chewed chicken neck, trailing a fine filigree of pink veins and saliva. The mutt grins up at me. I slap a mosquito away from my leg. I've brought the book back with me, fragrant and smeared with travel. I stare a while at the bowl of a ragged gum, trying to remember if that was the one the wood ducks used to nest in every summer. Curls of silvery bark skip in a sudden breeze gusting in from the east, bearing a faint trace of the dairy on the other side of the hill. The pages on my lap lift and fall open. I read. Bone, the symmetry of boundless existence. Flesh cleaved to movement, memory to skin. Sundered from the first moment of birth, of grace to womb, to earth, godlike, within. 
A hockey ball smashed my father's collarbone. The shattered bone splintered out of his skin. I pictured mottled ivory fingers reaching up from a torn and bloody mess and it gave me nightmares. I broke my collarbone too when I was young. I have an elbow on my shoulder now. It sits just under the shadow cast by my chin. I touch it sometimes to remember what fragility is. Peter Beaglehole also explored complex family relationships from the vantage point of a son starting to age. He catches himself in the mirror and for a moment sees someone else. So he steps towards his new reflection and examines the black heads and blood vessels that crack across his nose. He stretches the bags under his eyes, though swollen enough to build flood levees. Looking down, he's relieved he hasn't clipped his toenails. And he lifts his shirt and travels the circumference of his gut, wrenching his hand away as it triggers the thought, Columbus. Where had his neck gone? His jaw and cheekbones, they've seemed to bugger off too. He still had his strength though, and drops to the floor. One, two, two and a half. He collapses, resting his head on the carpet. He notices a burnt crust, but he'd sliced that off his toast, and he'd left that in the kitchen. And now it was in the hallway, and it's moving. He scuttles toward the animate crust, bringing um, his eyes level with it. Ants, a trio are dragging it along, so he brings his hand down. Skinny bastards with their exoskeletons. You never see a fat ant. He reaches for his dust buster and sucks up the crumbs and critters. As the evening wound up, before an appreciative crowd, Teresa Meads explained the background and benefits of the speakeasy. The speakeasy started off in 2009 and I was a part of you know, teaching students and encouraging them to come along and read at Speakeasy and it's just been incredible to see these ta the talent of the creative writers develop throughout the creative writing program um, but also I'm noticing that the the encouragement and the support they receive and the I guess the boost in self-esteem that they get from being a part of Speakeasy is also being taken back into the classroom and enhancing their, their learning and their enthusiasm for developing their craft further because it presents a challenge for them going out into the um, going out into the world and presenting their work. They kind of have to rise to the challenge. The the awards that our creative writers are winning, um, the publications that they're achieving from as early as first year creative writing, is a testament to the quality of teaching and the talent that's coming through our program.